Lesson 16, I will solve word problems involving money. All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at five different word problems, and there are some things that I really want you to think about. I want you to remember that we're going to be using the RDW process. That means we're going to read and we're going to draw. That means we're going to model the problem, and then we're going to write a number sentence, which is the same thing as calculate, and then we're going to answer it with a sentence. All right. Let's get started. So Miguel had one dollar bill, two dimes, and seven pennies. John had two dollar bills, three quarters, and nine pennies. How much money do the two boys have in all? All right, so what can we draw to represent this? Well, there are a couple of things, right? We could draw the money. It's not that many coins. We could draw a dollar and two dimes and seven pennies. We could use a tape diagram. We could do lots of things. First of all, I notice that this is not a comparison problem. So I'm actually going to use a tape diagram. And there are a couple of ways to use this tape diagram, but I'm just going to divide my tape diagram into two parts. And I'm going to label one M for Miguel, and I'm going to label one J for John. And I'm looking for how much do they have in all. So here's going to be where my question mark is. I have a total here. So I could come through here and put a dollar bill, two dimes, and seven pennies. But I think I'm just going to put how many cents they have. A dollar bill would be a hundred, and then two dimes would be twenty, and then seven pennies would be seven. So I'm going to put that Miguel has one hundred twenty-seven cents. I could put a dollar twenty-seven. That would be just fine. And then John has two dollars, and he has seventy-five cents, and then he has nine pennies. So I'm pretty sure I can add this in my head. 75 and 10 would be 85. So if I go back one, that's 84. So 284 cents. And I'm just trying to find out how much they have in all. So I'm just going to add these together. 127 cents plus 284 cents. And I'm just going to solve. So I get 11, 11, and 4. So that's 4. 111 cents, which is the same thing as four dollars and eleven cents. So how much money do the boys have in all? The boys have four dollars and eleven cents. That was pretty easy, right? All right, let's look at number two. So Sulin needed seven dollars thirteen cents to buy a book. In her wallet, she found three dollar bills, four dimes, and fourteen pennies. How much more money does Sola need to buy the book? Now, I'm hearing some comparison words like how much more money does she need, which isn't really how much more money does she have. So I'm thinking, um, when I model this problem, I think I'm going to use a tape diagram again. But let's think about this for a minute. This tape diagram, we're going to have how much money she has in her wallet, and then how much money does she need? And this is what we're trying to find out, right? How much more money does she need in order to buy her book? We know that she has three dollar bills, four dimes, and fourteen pennies. So these four dimes and fourteen pennies would be forty plus fourteen, which is fifty-four. So she has three hundred fifty-four cents and our total is how much the book cost, which is 713 cents, or I could say $7.13, either way. How would you solve a problem like this? If you have a part, and you're trying to figure out the missing part, and you know the total, what would your, what would your number sentence look like here? Is this addition? What would happen if I added these two numbers together? I would get something greater than the cost of the book, and I this should be less than the cost of the book. So we're actually going to subtract. I want you to copy this problem, and we'll just put it in cent form, minus 354 cents. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to subtract, and I want you to see what you get. So go ahead and pause the video, and then come back and let's check together. Okay, so I ended up with 359 cents. So you can see that I had to decompose this 10 to be able to subtract in the 1's, and then I had to decompose this 100 to be able to subtract in the 10's. 
so I ended up with 359 cents. So how much more money does Sola need to buy the book? So I guess that's how you say that name. Sulan, Sulan. Sola needs, I'm going to go ahead and put this in dollars and cents. She needs $3.59 more to buy the book. All right, Vanessa has six dimes and two pennies. Joaquin has one dollar, three dimes, and five pennies. Jimmy has five dollars and seven pennies. They want to put their money together to buy a game that costs eight dollars. Do they have enough money to buy the game? If not, how much more money do they need? I want you to pause the video here for a minute, and I want you to think about what would be the best model to draw here to try to figure out how you would solve this problem. And then I want you to come back and we'll compare. And let's see if we can both have a model that can get us the right answer. Okay, so this is what my model turned out to look like. Your model may have looked different, and that's perfectly okay. But here's the way I envision this. My thought was, well, first, I'm trying to figure out how much money do they all have together. So I visualize this as a tape diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve to see what the total is. So what would I do to find the total here? Well, I would add, right? So I'm going to go ahead and come over here, and I just have all of these written as cents, 507 cents, 135 cents, and 62 cents. And I'm just going to find a total just to see what it is all together. So this would be 14, and this would be 10, and this would be 7. So they have 704 cents. So do they have enough money to buy the game? So my first answer would be no, they do not have enough money to buy the game. How much more money do they need? Well, they need 800 cents, and they only have 704 cents. So how would I figure out how much more money do they need? Let's think about this for a minute. So they're trying to get 800 cents, or $8, and they have 704 cents. How would I solve for how much more money do they need? I want you to pause the video and see if you can't figure that out by yourself and then come back. Well, hopefully you thought to yourself, well, this is subtraction. And I went ahead and subtracted 800 minus 704 cents, and I got 96 cents. So now I'm ready to answer the question. The question was, do they have enough money to buy, what were they trying to buy? They were trying to buy a game. So no, they do not. No, they need 96 cents more to buy the game. All right, let's take a look at the next one. A pen cost $2.29. A calculator cost three times as much as a pen. How much do a pen and a calculator cost together? So let's think about how could we model this problem for a minute. We've got a pen and then we got a calculator that costs three times as much. Well, this kind of sets off a bell in my head. I'm hearing a comparison. How would you model the cost of a pen compared to the cost of a calculator? Well, I would do it something like this. My pen cost 229 cents. And if a calculator costs three times as much, then it's going to be three of the same tape diagrams All of these would be 229 cents. Now what am I trying to solve for? Am I trying to solve for the price of the calculator? When I go back and look at the problem it says how much of the pen and calculator cost together? So I'm trying to find a total here. I want you to pause the video and I want you to solve this all by yourself. How would you find the total of both of these items together? When you're finished, come back and let's check. The worst thing that happens is you get it wrong, and that's okay. You can erase and you can correct it. Okay, so let's compare. My first thought was, well, I see 229 four times. 
So I thought, well, I'll just multiply 229 times 4, and that gave me 916 cents. This certainly wasn't the only way to solve this problem. Did you get the same answer using a different strategy? You could have solved for the price of the calculator and then added it to the cost of the pen and got the same answer. So let's go ahead and write our statement. The pen and calculator cost $9.00. And 16 cents. All right, last problem. Krista has seven dollars and 32 cents. Mallory has two dollars and four cents. How much money does Krista need to give Mallory so that each of them have the same amount of money? Hmm. There's a couple of ways to solve this problem. Let's take a minute just to think about it and think, hmm. How would we solve this? My first thought is we want them to have equal amounts of money, right? So maybe the best idea would be to find a total first. Let's think about this. Okay, so let's model this for just a minute. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use a tape diagram, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and put Krista and Mallory's money together. I think that's what I need to find out first, is how much money do they have together? Because in order for them to have equal amounts, first of all, I've got to find out how much money they have all together. So this would be 732 cents, and this would be 204 cents. So let's find a total here. What would I do to find out how much money they have all together? I would add, right? So let's go ahead and add these together and see what we get. I get 936 cents. Now, if they're going to have equal amounts of money, how do you figure out how 936 could be put into two groups? What kind of math is that? That would be division, right? So I would take 936 and I would divide it by 2. Do you remember how to do this? Well, we're going to start by saying how many times does 2 go into 9. If you remember how to do this, go ahead and pause the video and do it all by yourself. But if you want me to get you started just to kind of get your brain working, you can listen for a little bit. So 9 divided by 2 would be 4, right? And then 4 times 2 is 8, so let's see how many hundreds we would have left over. Well, I would have 100 left over, so then I bring down this 3, and now I start over. I take 13 and put that into two groups. So that would be 6, because 6 times 2 is 12. And then I would have 110 left over. So I bring down this 6. Now I have 16. And 16 divided by 2 would be 8. 8 times 2 is 16, so I have no remainder. Okay, so both girls need $4.68. When I go back and look at the question, it doesn't say how much money does both girls need. It says how much money does Krista need? need to give to Mallory so that each of them have the same amount. So if this is how much money Krista has, and this is how much money we want both of them to have, how am I going to figure out how much money Mallory needs to give to Krista? What would I do to 732 and 468? Well, if I'm talking about giving money, I'm going to be subtracting. So I'm going to subtract to see how much money Krista needs to give to Mallory. So let's go ahead and subtract and see what we get. 12 minus 8 is 4, and I'm going to have to regroup here. 12 minus 6 is 6, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Oops, that should be 2. So, what this tells me is that Krista needs to give Mallory $2.64 so that each girl will have $4.68. So, how much money does Krista need to give to Mallory? So, Krista needs to give Mallory $4.68. Alright, so this lesson today was all about problem solving with money. I hope that you are finding drawing a model very valuable. Please take the time to always think about what can you model. Your model does not have to be just like mine to help you to understand the problem and to still help you to get the right answer.